What's up, everybody? It's your girl Erica from the Classy Clown blog out here on vacation. But I had to bring you this show because, you know, a lot of people are saying, Erica, everybody can't do tech. No, no worries, baby. There is a whole lane for you that we got open. <laughs> We got a couple different lanes I see opening, and I had to bring on an expert on this. If you're been inside the Middleman to Millions course, you've already heard from Rochelle Ward. Okay, listen, I'm gonna let this lady introduce herself because she has put years into the business, and she recently started. I would say what two years now, three years. Yep, two years, absolutely. And I want y'all to understand that I'm gonna just give y'all a couple numbers before we before we uh, we really throw into it and let her introduce herself. There's a company called Handyman Services. It's a, it's a whole franchise. They had to make it up. They're going to do $4.4 billion in the next five years. They've already done the math on it. They know their franchise is going to do $4.4 billion in the next five years because the demand is that large, you guys. It's a gold mine out here. You have a lot of people walking around who can't fix anything. They, they got two left hands and they can't fix nothing. So if all the men is working at the new construction, building brand new houses all over the United States, who's coming to your house to fix something? Money to be made. And it ain't just women now, because people say all these women can't fix nothing. It's men out here can't fix nothing. Okay, it's elderly people. They could do it, but they might fall and hurt themselves. It's, 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 it's young mothers, it's everybody. There's a lot of need for people to repair and replace things. We're also in a fourth turning, so we're just gonna have a crunch on necessary repair people for the next 20 years. So introduce yourself, Rochelle Ward. Tell them who you are and, and introduce them because you, you're repping Florida today. So go ahead and do it. All day, all day. Well, my name is Rochelle Ward. Um, first and foremost, I'm a classy climber. I've been following Erica yeah. for years. Thank you, thank you. And the reality, I tell people all the time, if I did what the hell she told my hard-headed ass to do about five years ago, I'd be sitting right next to her. Hey, hey, hey. But it's all good, though. The reality is, is um, I um, they call me the queen of appliance repair. You know, I try to stay humble, work hard. You know, I actually just slid in here five seconds ago because we were still out here grinding. But mm -hmm. the reality is um, my background is mechanical. I've been in uh, the trades for 30 years. I came out of the automotive side, worked my way from grease monkey all the way up to corporate ladder. You know, manage certain regions and things of that nature. And then when COVID had hit, I'd already been listening to Erica, coming up with where I was going to do, whether I was going to go IT or whether I was going to do trades. And I figured, you know what? I got this skill set. I know how to put systems in place. Let me go ahead and do handle this high end appliance repair. So that's mm -hmm. the route I took. Took a couple of courses. And I made it happen. So this is where I am today, coaching and uh, training other business uh, owners and things of that nature. Um, on how to get out here and get it in. And so something I keep telling y'all, she's in Florida. Y'all have to realize all these New Yorkers coming down to Florida, they don't know how to fix nothing either. <laughs> you got all these snowboards, they coming down to just be, they just on vacation, basically. This ain't they full-time house. Exactly. So so what is the, what's the gap you seeing? Because you're in high-end repair right now. Yeah. So this is the gap, like prime example. Um, you know, we have a what we call a round table down here of mm -hmm. ethical, uh, appliance repair professionals. Mm -hmm. And the beautiful thing about appliance repair, what people don't understand is we touch everything from plumbing. When we're dealing with your washers and dishwashers, we have to run ice lines for isolate makers and things like that. Uh, we deal with electrical, we deal with welding when we're doing compressors. You know, we also roll over into HVAC. So what I see here, I was just coaching somebody, uh, shout out to my boy, Benton, um, mm -hmm. because he was talking about how the snowbirds are calling him because they're calling him having property managers, having people open the houses for him to go do a walkthrough and check everything. I said, dude, you need a, a winter home uh, maintenance business. You need a business where you offer a, a maintenance plan where you throughout the year, you make sure these things, uh, there's avenues everywhere. You know, where I see the big push at is that um, there are, there's such a struggle to find people in the trades. So mm -hmm. in my area, I did research and I focused on high end because, number one, I was really clear that that was the clientele that was going to be able to take care of me and support my uh, endeavors. But also they uh, would be receptive to the caliber of service I was bringing to the table. So mm -hmm. I focus on main And right now we're honing in real hard on uh, we're honing in really hard on refrigeration. 
because what most people don't know, and this might sound like Greek, you know, many years ago, we went from R12, you saw it happen in cars, to R134. Mm -hmm. Everybody rolling in something old, you go to the automotive shop and they say, we got to retrofit you to R134. That mm -hmm. has to do with EPA regulations. Mm -hmm. Well, now, in appliance repair, we're going from R134 to R600. And a lot mm -hmm. of guys are scared of that simply because it's butane based. Right. Now, in Europe and other countries, they've been rolling like that. But there's a special way you're going to have to either weld or do something called lock ring. And that's what I'm always about, the guys I'm coaching and training. Like, look, we got to stay ahead of the curve. So I mm -hmm. see that coming. The other side of appliance repair that people are sleeping on is the IT side. All this smart home. You get in with the building. Yeah. Stuff, and then you do all the programming and set up. Because, you know, one of my business partners, shout out to Lamar, shout out to Terry. Y'all know what time it is. We call ourselves the triple effect. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Lamar does a lot with home technology. So does Terry, you know, with lightning and electrical and things of that nature. So it's all about aligning yourself with people that think like you. You know, the mm -hmm. trades, we're the blue collar millionaires and have been so for years. And yeah. now we add the technology curve. You put the systems in place. And let's not forget about uber lyft and amazon they've already trained that everybody this is a gig economy you know mm -hmm. sears just let several technicians go recently and the bottom line is is that people don't want the overhead so you can get in your lane create yep. your business you know you got next door you got angie's lifts if you want to go that way a lot of people recommend you come through warranty because people buy these homes they get the home warranty uh program going and somebody's got to come and fix that those are subcontractors like me that do it but in everything you do, you got to have strategy and got to have a plan. For sure, for sure. And, and what I keep trying to get people to understand is um, we, we, you know, Mike Rowe, I made, I made a comment yesterday and I meant it. Mike Rowe, Dirty Jobs is coming back. Not because they like, oh, you know, we just want to have all this eyes on TV. One, yes, that's the studios. Businesses were begging the studio to come. Like when they would say what qualified as a dirty job, they would submit. Like companies would be like, yo, come interview us. We out here in the middle of this doing this or what, whatever uh, repair they thought was a dirty job. And so that's why he never had he never had a, a shortage of, of companies to go see because companies were submitting to him to do what? Get more traction, get more eyes on their business. Every one of the people that were on those shows, they kept saying, oh, my God, we've got so many young men applying to the to the jobs. We could never get this many applications. And it's because they saw Mike Rowe dirty jobs. So now these companies, they beg the TV to bring it back. They bring in Mike Rowe dirty jobs back. What's going to happen is people always assume everything blue collar is you breaking your bag, you crawling under houses, you crawling under roofs. And that's just not true. I remember one time I was talking to you on the phone and you was, we was fixing what, ice? Was it an ice machine that one time I talked to you? Uh huh. Talking about the ice was not working. I was like, that's it? She's like, yes, girl. I got to fix this ice machine. <laughs> Yeah, and I probably I was, told you that was five fifty, six fifty. You know how I am. I'm yeah, all about six hundred and fifty bu fifty bucks to fix an ice machine. Think about that. Y'all husbands at the house is tearing up stuff, and now they got to call somebody to come fix it, and that's where it comes in. So a lot of times, what happens is, imagine you could come do something in thirty minutes and be done, an hour and be done, two hours and be done. And people, I mean, you in Florida, you got to have ice machine working in your house in Florida. That just ain't even a, a option, right? Part of what I think is happening is people aren't exposed enough to it. Like they know there's money out there, but how do they get to it, right? So when it comes to your company, what's been the hardest thing on you hiring? Well, my business model is based on subcontractors, very much like your painting model was. So, mm -hmm. you know, the hardest thing was when you interview subcontractors, because, you know, they swear they can fix everything. You mm -hmm. got to be able to hone in on a specialty, what they specialize in and keep them in that lane. And then right. you got to realize you got a baby, the ego, you know, you got to be mama, daddy, pastor, preacher, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Because the <laughs> reality you gotta is up. you got to butter them up. Come you on. would be surprised how tender people's egos are when, you know, we come from a world where business is business. You know, mm -hmm. but the reality is, is they because they know they can stop and go somewhere and do something else. They don't care how much you pay them. It's how you handle them. So the most difficult That's thing I, I, I've had has been transitioning from the corporate side of where I had built morale, you know, camaraderie. So dealt in the years to people who are out here 
who really don't have integrity. Like, you know, that's been the hardest thing and the quality of their work. Like you can pay somebody to do a job, they jack it up and you still got to pay somebody else to go fix it or you got to go do it. Like it's that real. And people just, it's a whole different, it's a different ball game because the trades are, these guys know that they're rare. Uh huh. And um, this is why you got to do your data and your research so that you can get in. My whole goal is, is how many can I turn in a day? How, how can I minimize the recall possibility? And how can I keep my five star reviews? And so like all that stuff is together because when you come from a corporate standpoint, a business point, you're going to look at that business that way. How do I build it where year round is successful? I don't have to be dependent on lead. Like me, I'm not dependent on leads. I'm not dependent on yep. anything because I build some people come in, they go through warranty. Then when warranty start acting funny or don't want to pay them right, then they stuck. Well, what they don't understand, you really got a job. You know what I mean? You created another job. It's nothing wrong with doing warranty, but use that as an entrance into something else and use it as a filler. So, so part of what I think people understand is uh, we talk about shortages, but when you when you talk about how you handle them, it's the same with trucking. They know there is a shortage of people like them, and they want to be talked to with respect because it's their time. Now, the the something I want to in the future, I've talked to Tim Jackson and several people who are over nonprofits is literally every year, if I can get about 20, 20 to 30 black boys every quarter, get them trained up on something and roll them out. Be like, Hey, I got the best. I can send them to you wherever in the United States. Um, part of what I think is going to be an issue is people watch something on YouTube. Like I tried to watch YouTube university and they couldn't figure it out. And that's how they start, you know, getting these phones ringing. Um, mm -hmm. people are saying great information, great show. I'm glad you guys are enjoying it. Uh, Miss America said, FYI, large facilities can't be shut down. It's like turning off a switch. In many cases, it's like a nuclear reactor. You can't just shut down large facilities. This is true. And slowly but slowly. Facts. Nick Taylor said, I love that TV show, Dirty Jobs. I sent them an email, but I never got a response beside acknowledging they got it. Nick Taylor, I think they were flooded for years with, with messages and emails, and they never gave it um, the right amount of staff, right? They just never did. Also, when you were talking about the tech in the house, Money Madu's house and Airbnb, there was a tech guy that came in before everybody else, before they closed up all the walls. <clears throat> He installed speakers. The speakers connected to different parts of the house. Uh, he had the lights. When you get in the shower, the lights turned on. It's certain if it's hot, cold. Um, it's a lot of tech. And that guy didn't get dirty. That guy came in and put some cords in and connected some things. And then he was done. So there's a lot of little different ways that people can get in there. <clears throat> so when it came from you switching from the automotive to handyman, what, what made you do that? What made you say, you know, I can do that? Well, the key is, is that once you have technical skills and ability, you can trans that translates to all the trades. What I what made me do it was when COVID hit, I was watching the way the company I was working with for was handling people and mm -hmm. I already had an exit strategy. I really re I realized my job was my first investor. And the reality is I pimped it for all I could. You know how I <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but the re But when I saw how they were moving, I was like, okay, this is time for me to go. And right before, and everything I said was going to happen. You know, they chopped up the company. They sold off this. They did yep. that. But you know, that's big business. It's and big. I started writing on the wall. So I had started part-time on my days off. And when COVID hit, I was like, look, I can give you guys three days. You know, they wanted me to work. I am like, nah, bro, that's not happening because I'm making <laughs> X, Y, and Z, you know, over here. So mm -hmm. I made the decision and I jumped head first and I had everything I needed to have in place. And, you know, I took the lumps as I went. That's why I'm able to coach and, and train people now. Because you, you can show them how to go from part time to full time. Mm -hmm. What is something that frustrates you? Is it being is it too much work? Is it is it, you know, running late? Is it the nonstop? What, what is it that frustrates you out of the industry? What frustrates me the most is, is that, as you know, um, Erica, when you're an entrepreneur and you have a gift, you might be focused in this lane. You follow me? But mm -hmm. things are constantly coming up. Like prime example, you just talked about how you get a group of guy, a group of young men and train them. Well, me and my business partners, we already put this thing in place where we're contracting with Department of Labor, 
the government and stuff to train dislocated workers like this is all part of the build out because yeah. we wanna, and then not to mention the government contract side so mm -hmm. we are excuse my language balls to the walls on all fronts mm -hmm. and this is why you got to be surrounded by leaders and visionaries like yourself and to go to the next level but what frustrates me the most is that people do not pay attention to what's in front of them they'll go to youtube and try to figure something out uh, they'll go here go there and i and and one thing about me i bet everything i do is strategy even mm -hmm. when i'm talking to a customer on the phone if it's not my caliber customer i promote them to somebody else the mm -hmm. problem i have though is like to be honest with you some of my round table they'll be referring me jobs and i'll be looking at them like you already know <laughs> i don't want that you know i don't even I don't, look like prime example people pick at me all the time because i say i don't get wet because i don't do dishwashers or washers mm -hmm. well in my opinion and look let me tell you i'm not knocking those guys but those guys make it a killing mm -hmm. because the reality is in my mind the most abused appliance in the house is the washer and the dishwasher oh for because sure people think they got the maytag man from 30 30 years ago where you can throw like a broomstick anything in there and run or you can break glass in the dishwasher and not jack up the pump you know and so there are people who are qualified to handle that who enjoy that and i just send them right to my other people on my round table who do that where i can focus on high-end refrigeration like if i'm doing a thirty thousand dollar sub-zero my minimum the job's going to be thirty five hundred to five thousand mm -hmm. And then if I focus on an LG or Samsung, two appliances that guys hate to work on, mm -hmm. you know, you know why they hate to work on them? Because they're all computer control. And a lot of the old guard, they don't want to transition into understanding yep. that. So they don't want it. And that goes back to the research I did to be successful. I focus in what other people don't want to do. And I believe in being the best at it or being ha having access to the resources that can take care of those clients for me. So, so part of what I think, um, you know, the reason I know you put together a course and it's coming, y'all, I think January 1st, we got to get on our back, get that thing done, where a lot of people can really learn from you is that's 2022 is wide open. You got a lot of these offices, these corporate offices, they've been closed. They got people coming back to work in March. They're going to be in there. Stuff going to be breaking. Appliances going to be breaking. The coffee machine ain't been worked all year long. You know, the bathrooms, the toilets. Okay, you got people moving to uh, the snowbirds, moving to Florida, going to their vacation houses in Carolinas. Um, I don't know if y'all guys saw it, but I'm going to show it again on my screen. I typed in handyman just to, just to get an idea of, let me show y'all real quick, just to show y'all how crazy. I typed in rise of handyman services just to see what pop up. I mean, you had literally handyman and kitty hawk. Handyman on demand, handyman services and awesome. Handyman, like it's it's crazy. But you know what? Somebody said in the comments, most of these people is booked out four to six weeks. They booked exactly. out for most stuff. So this is why when people say, Well, Erica, oh, that's crowded. It how is it crowded? I promise you, it is gonna be hard. Y'all gonna have a hard time. If it the best thing you can do, if you somebody and you lost your job, you like, man, Erica, I ain't trying to do no tech. <laughs> can you can you learn how to fix a few things because i know people literally when we were painting in austin there was an elderly couple i mean they was wealthy i mean i'm talking about they up on the hill and they just liked our one of our painters thought he was the nicest guy and they said hey can you can you look at this drain can you look at this gutter can you look at this over here can you look at that over there by the time we were done he said eric and i looked at everything in their daggone house I, I could be here for weeks fixing just their house little stuff you got to realize people don't have time and really they don't have the skills to fix little, little issues. So um, it, it, it's a lot of open opportunity out here for that. I know Mike, get over there. She calling you. Rochelle, no, we, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Hey, uh, hey, <laughs> hey y'all give me two seconds. No My worries. Mom's here and uh, she's cooking something on the stove. I just need to move it. No, I you're fine. Her, and I'm <laughs> I'm like, mom, mom. You You're know, burning it. Know me, my mom is always in, in my video somewhere. Uh, okay, while she over there checking the dinner, I'm going to read the super chat. Thank you for the $20 super chat. Beautiful black women talking trades and positive tone. Here's my type. Thank you. Y'all get the likes up. Don't forget to subscribe. Okay. Finding good people you can trust is hard. Again, Calvin Mackey, I think it's really important if you're in the trades to realize if I were you, what I would be doing, I would be constantly putting out ads saying you will train. 
19 to 20 year 19 to 25 years old that you will try My bad, my bad. That's the number one thing I heard from people is that they they, they wanted to start a job, but they didn't have skills. So I think you got to be open to training people at some point in time in their career, their company. They got to have a part of it. has got to train. Henry, handyman work is wide open. I'm usually booked four to six weeks out. I'm telling you. Miss Ward channel, check it out. Solid Steps to Wealth. Watch it. Tons of game. Thank you, BK from the Rockies. Thank you, John Ditska at State Marine Merchant Marine Academies, they have a four-year facilities manager engineer degree for sure jobs. Cheap tuition, huge salary. I believe it. Thanks. Um, oh, thank you so much. Master, Mastermind Jay said you guys are inspirational women. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, yep, yep, yep. Uh, I met a lot of men say they don't do manual labor. You will. You'll meet a lot of men, but what's going to happen is just like in trucking, you're going to have the women slide into, you know, here comes Susie fixing your eyes maker. You know, yeah. if, if anybody else can fix it, she'll come fix it. Yeah. Uh, Calvin said, I mostly do referrals by my customers. Otherwise, I can't take on too much. Calvin Mackey, I promise you, when we were over there painting people's houses, they'd be like, well, you did such a good job painting. Can you see this over here and <laughs> that over there? You'd be like, what they got to do with painting? Not a thing. <laughs> they just trust you. You got a nice attitude or something like that. They, yeah. That's what it mostly it is. Absolutely. Uh, my for, my friend in Florida is making a killing with the handyman app, putting together furniture and cleaning houses. Y'all, th there is no reason in 2022 to be broke. I'm going to tell you right now, we at this beach house and little things have been messed up, right? Like the hot tub that went hot one day, something over here wasn't working, something down in the hallway. And they had the same guy in the company truck come fix it. And he said, well, what is that? Mm, I don't know, but I'm going to try to work on it. So I can already tell you that man ain't certified and everything, but he's going to try to tinker with it. Because he did only him and one of the guys, only guy I've seen, they here in the off season all day long. They like, what well, well, let me see. <laughs> so I mean it, it's an opportunity for you to learn on the way. Good gracious. James said one of my handyman said he made easy 275. I believe it. I believe every bit of it. Um and I can tell y'all, when I worked in an office, when I worked in apartment management, the biggest thing it was was having some guy that was willing to at least try, right? Like Paying him 60K a year and he's doing everything all over the property. It's uh or even a cheaper level called porters. They're called porters. They basically are there to learn on the job. So all right, you back. Did you get the dinner right? You got oh, it right. Yeah. <laughs> so so yeah. what can somebody do? Uh, okay, well, here's a question. I'm gonna read Jay Way's question for you. In new appliances coming out that have interfaces that are online, how technical people do how technical do people have to have when they're becoming a, I'm sorry, I'm misreading this. How how technical do handyman services have to be with new appliances? Sorry. Well, you see it? It, yeah, yeah, I see it. So there's two. That's two part. You'll notice on a lot of the new appliances, and we've been talking about this in the industry. They'll have technical support. They'll have a phone number, or mm -hmm. you can push a button and it goes directly to technical support. The key is is not to be uncomfortable with computers or interfacing. Like prime example, where I was tonight, I, we were dealing with a uh, LG. We had to install a universal compressor because they have issues. But the re key here is universal. When it's universal, we have to do something called a jig. And all it is is something we plug in and it updates, up, updates the software on that board now this board is going to be used across many lg refrigerators but it's going to be updated for that specific one and that's basically where everything's going like i work with ge's and i have something very similar you know like in your car where you plug in a scanner and it reads the code and the data it's the same thing so the reality is find your niche i always recommend the technical guys to go into updates and software like prime example what most people don't realize when you go to Burger King, McDonald's, a lot of these places, and they have these kiosks and they have the registers, a lot of those things have old software. There are companies that will pay you to go in and upload the software. And people are like, well, why can't the manager do it? Well, the manager's not certified to do it. They don't <laughs> want to do the regular job. Well, they don't even want to do it. They, they just exactly. Did. They but, you know, it. I know guys with huge contracts like managing uh uh ice machines servicing ice machines for chipotle 
making a killing. I mean, like in the service industry, they got service contracts with Pepsi and Coca-Cola. Like most people don't even realize when you go to Wawa or these different uh, certain large uh, service centers, they don't own that equipment. They're leasing it from Pepsi mm-hmm. and Coca-Cola. So they'll pay people like me to go out and service it. I mean, what am I doing every day? I just go in there. I get paid two to $300 to, you know, take some nozzles, clean them, make sure everything's fresh. I mean, I know guys who would make, the guys that make like $10,000 per McDonald's. And what they do is they go in at midnight. They finish the job in an hour with steam. All they're doing is using hot steam to clean the ice machine. And then they sit there for eight hours because of the contract, but they're done. I mean, you have to find your lane and you do the research. You, you can do, and let's not prime example. I got guys now that's working with Tesla as subcontractors. They're installing the uh, charging, uh, charging equipment for the Tesla automobiles in people's homes and at gas stations. Like it's across the board. For sure, for sure. I, I'm, I'm seeing, I'm noticing, uh, like, I'm going to give y'all an example. I'm going to show y'all this screen over here. Just because people are like, oh, what kind of things? Everything. Like, y'all don't understand. <laughs> Everything. Now, I just typed in, this is Mr. Handyman. It's another one of those franchises. Y'all don't have to buy into a franchise. Y'all literally can do some of this stuff independent. Look exactly. at vacuum services. Caulk, install, putting on doors, drywall repairs, light fixture repair, minor leaks. Shower head services, uh, toilet repair, little stuff, right? So then you can even go here. It goes by room, right? Deck and patio. So there's so many little things on a house. That's why I noticed when I was when we had painters, they're like, "Oh, they asked us, can we look at this?" And I'm like, "No, we can't look at that. I don't know what that is." But but that's the ne- nature of it. Is people have all these little areas in their house they can't do it, right? So then they they were asked or find somebody to do it again. Baby proofing, okay. What? Well, come on, that's just a couple hours of your day putting what different things on doorknobs and handles again. Crowd molding installation, custom shelves, furniture, furniture assembly, picture hanging. Come on now, y'all. <laughs> I just I just want to show y'all that because people always are like, well, what does that include? You got to realize, and if you don't have, I mean, it just go there. If you don't have two people in a house, let's say you have a man and a woman, and the man still can't fix nothing. It's everything. Everything's available to be done. Exactly. Um, y'all got some questions in here, so I'm gonna go through some of them. Let's see. Lots of incoming money for service contractors installing door ring doorbells. Yes, I believe that. How much would you charge for that, Rochelle? Yeah, usually they charge anywhere from 150 up to about 500. The reason that is is because sometimes people get the doorbell, then they want us to do the camera that's on mm-hmm. a pole, which is insane. Uh. They can't do that. When people call me and say blah blah blah, and then they be like, "Well, I would do it if I had the tools." I'm thinking in my brain, I'm like, "Okay, you would. Maybe you should." <laughs> <laughs> no, they wouldn't. No, they wouldn't. They can, they you wouldn't know? do it if they had the tools either because yeah. they mess it up. Yeah, but you know, Erica, that's why we created the uh, course, the beta course we have coming out January first. Mm-hmm. Uh, text to Titans, and that specialized dealing. We uh, deal with guys who are already in the field are interested in getting in the field and we walk them through how to set up the businesses and make sure that they're streamlined sign up for warranty companies things of that nature and get them started and then of course we coach them through the whole process we have different levels to it we also are offering a couple's appliance repair course because a lot of times the couples are the husband and wife team Mm -hmm. and there are no courses for them Mm -hmm. like how does she handle the office and then he's the tech and how do they keep yep. that from causing internal issues in their other yes. side? They you know, and then of course we got the other side where we're really focusing on the trays and getting these guys cleaned up so they can be professional because the reason people could come off the street and, and and come into these industries and change their name every month you know with some subcontractors is because Listen. Of the guys do not know how to answer the phone they don't know mm-hmm. how to do the phone service they don't know how to vet the phone service they don't know how to do the accounting they don't know how to set up square and stripe and set their business credit up and things of that nature so that's why we created tech the titan this is so important y'all it's because in my course I only did a i did like an overview if you want that deep level step by step by step by step this is where you want to go because a lot of stuff, people are like, well, what else do I need, Eric? I'm like, baby, I gave you the outline. I, we were winging it when we started the painting company, and we still was killing it, okay? Like, it's not that hard. <laughs> but when you want to get detailed, when you talk about appliances, 
you want to go with Rochelle. You want to go deeper level on the conversation. I can tell you about fencing and painting. It's too easy, baby. Like some easy basic stuff. Hey, I can tell you about it. But that deep level applying stuff, nah. Go ahead and hit Rochelle up. That's she know what she's talking about. Uh, how to calculate to pay for jobs? That's probably in the course, right? Yeah, you know absolutely. Yeah. You know, we yeah we got some people that do like flat pricing. Mm -hmm. You know, we offer the option of doing blue book. You, you know, using the blue book because you want to be streamlined across the line. You want to have that corporate feel and appearance, and you want to get paid for what you do. The key is you got to do quality work. That way, you can you can charge accordingly. Uh, somebody said picture hanging that slowly Junie you got to understand like imagine it's a mom home with a baby and she want to hang up a big old thing like in here there's three major TVs in this room I can assure you the guy that came and fixed the stuff in the house they had to hang these up in the right way because they have the electrical box and a certain little hanging they got all stuff in this room I promise you it, we think it's lazy but there's somebody making a killing just hanging TVs exactly. they got TVs all over this bad boy Tam put how to structure your LLC. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's in there as well. Yeah. Um, how do you find the course? Again, Rochelle, tell them the course is coming out. What date? It's going to be January 1st. We're starting the beta course. So, of course, it's going to be at a discounted rate. You'll be able to get all that information. Right now, what we're doing is we're offering coaching because that's a full-time situation we got going on there. And we coach in all the different areas because how that even came about was when I got into it, you know, guys would call me all the time because word got around that I had the business game. Mm -hmm. You know, and so they would call me. How do you set up this? How do you set up that? So in order to service everybody, you know, we created the uh, consulting so we can consult on government contracting. We can consult on how to structure your business, how to do a service call, those type of things. Because some guys just need to be tweaked a little bit. They, you know, they weren't aware. They got into it and got so overwhelmed. They saw the money coming in. But then at the end of the month, they had nothing to show for it. They were in the negative. You know, right, right, so right, right. that's what the we came in. So the government contracting, has that been hard for you? No, you know, I, of course, took a course at your advice. You know, I saw Hamza uh, mm -hmm. on the show. So I went ahead and that's another thing. You all know how I feel about that free 99. I paid <laughs> for that course, 2,500 to three Gs. But now he gave me the game, as the kids say, and I'm able to structure. My stuff is basically on autopilot because mm -hmm. I went in with a plan. You know, and that's what I mean about, like Erica says, you'll see Erica in every live. She's always pulling up information to support what she's promoting because she's done the research. The reality is we need to get up off our butts and, and get beyond Google and dig deep in your area what works for you. Because in just in your city, area, there's a demand. And just in your city alone, like uh, the biggest thing I always tell my coaching students, my digital real estate students, uh, any of my students, if you actually just just step out on like five percent of what i said you'll be amazed we have some people in the coaching class that already got coaching clients they sent me some testimonials i'm gonna post it um there's a lot of little things if you test it if you step out and test it say hey you guys what do you think about this you're gonna you're gonna get that feedback right um there's just it's just out there there's a lot of information out there and there's a lot of people who need these services so somebody said in here uh, if you're if you're a handyman and you don't know how to do something sub it out I'm pretty sure in the course you tell people how to make these referrals and how to get these partnerships. Yep. Uh, this is what this lady said. Extraordinary said, I was charged $150 with a discount for a doorbell installation. There we go. That ain't even a ring camera, y'all. She said doorbell <laughs> installation. I promise you there's a lot of people who get into a home and uh, one of my students wants to make a manual for homeowners, uh, like all the things you need to do as a homeowner. I think she'll make a killing on it because prime example, doorbell installation. Somebody just, you know, a small thing can add up when all of a sudden you move into a home and there's 20 things you didn't know you needed to be fixed and now they need to be fixed. Exactly, exactly. Um, let's see, whoops, sorry. Back-end services, that's a good word for it, back-end services. I charge $150 to $200 for ring doorbells. L.A. Ramon. You probably could do that all day. You probably could really <laughs> install <laughs> ring camera, five of them a day, and, and have your $1,000 day. Because what you're going to have is an increase of people when they get them packages stole. they like, somebody come up and put this ring camera up. Put it up ASAP. 
exactly and then the beautiful part about the ring when he mm -hmm. or she is installing it's like rope it's like okay i got a system i got all my tools mm -hmm. and then he'll get it down to the point i'm doing it 20 minutes a pop buck 50 buck Probably. 50 buck 50, 50, 50, 50 200 200 you know because mm -hmm. you're doing it so much you're doing it so often yeah it's not even a, it's not even a painting i promise you there's always money in painting my biggest thing about painting is when you're going inside someone's home with dogs kids all that little stuff um the the best painting is when there's nobody there when it's before they move in or in between when they're turning tenants but when you have people who live in the home and you got to be there and they watching you it's annoying <laughs> it's annoying um uh, let me see money management yep yep yeah. I have a regular handyman and he makes bank honey. I told y'all our family has a plumber that our family's used for 20 plus years. Mr. Roland in North Carolina. Mr. Roland done retired. He <laughs> sold his business to two young men and people still call Mr. Roland. The men, them two young men is busy, but they still calling 75 year old Mr. Roland. He over there picking up toilets and changing. You're like, what you doing? He said, well, people call me and I'll be feeling bad. <laughs> I feel bad they ain't got it done yet. I'd be like, okay, Mr. Roland, you ain't never going to retire like that. Some electrical. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. listen, here's the thing. Uh, Super Gardner, there's things that uh, the reason someone has handyman on their title is they're not supposed to do so much certain type of work. So, yeah. Exactly. exactly. Yep. Conking, installation, junk removal, man. You'll be busy all day with junk removal. Yeah. This part, changing out, receptacle, switching, and lighting very stuff that we call easy it's not easy to people y'all y'all think it's you're like oh that's so easy no it's not yeah. bk from the rockies i've consulted with miss ward and it was well worth the value she really helped me jump start in the appliance repair hey take a picture of that rochelle that's your screenshot right. that's your testimonial take a picture of it there you go got it got it i did lock the right. ring. oh she said doorbell camera okay there you go extraordinary there you go your ring doorbell camera mm -hmm. This too, this is too, pressure washing. I mean, all these things we're listing under here, when people tell me they broke or they nephew broke or their cousin broke, how? I could probably go take you over to Home Depot, get you a pressure wash and get you knocking doors. Hey, I'll pressure wash your whole blah, 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 real exactly. quick and get it done. Yeah, I have one on um, my truck. <laughs> he said 150 to 200 doesn't include setting up the software for the camera system. Come on, Ramon, I see you getting it. You charging them. <laughs> hey, Ramon got a la carte. <laughs> he said did you have that That's service over there <laughs> um we do handyman services appliance repair tv mounting ceiling fan installed that's really a big one ceiling fans garage door repair oh that's another big one large-scale property managers are blowing us up miss ward has helped us leverage up take a screenshot of that baby that's a good one i got it I tam got property it. preservation exactly property preservation is a really big one a lot of people don't understand that even if a property's empty even if you get the tenants out you're gonna have to come check the water you're gonna have to come make sure nothing's broken nobody came in and stole anything make sure the electrical's working there's a lot of little things you do even in property preservation even in these beach houses out here like we notice the beach houses that aren't rented they got the they got the handyman truck at the window fixing stuff repairing stuff getting it ready for the next people this is very common for sure what's something you want to uh, tell the people tell the people about Florida and all the the services going on in Florida well first thing I want to do you know I got to shout out my crew because I'm always mm -hmm. representing South, South Florida so first thing I want to tell you guys you know Florida is a beautiful <laughs> a beautiful state to visit you know we're a long state so definitely pack a couple of lunches when you come mm -hmm. Uh, and the reality is, is that we're a team down here. You know, I if I shine, we all shine. So I'm just going to give a little shout out to the crew. Brandon, Brother B, shout out to um, Mike Check, shout out to Quentin. Uh, you know, a lot of these people may help me stay successful. Venton, uh, Big Al, I'm giving all these guys a shout out because they always there for me. Casey, um, you know, these people got my back. Richard. Raheem just finished the job for me tonight. So it really takes a team. And what I want to tell people is this. Whatever you want to do, please put a system in place. And please understand, you got to put boots on the ground. When you have any business, you I see a lot of people suffering from analysis, paralysis analysis. Get off the fence and go try. You don't know till you try. You know, and that's all I can say about any business you're going to. Now, as far as us in South Florida, 
we really are getting the bag. We get in the bag on every coast. I mean, you got to realize we got Miami, we got the Keys, we got the other side of Florida with Tampa, Orlando, um, you know, it's just Claremont. I mean, places you never heard of. It's opportunity everywhere. And the beautiful thing about Florida is we're year round. We work year round. I mean, you look at the Orlando market, you look at the Ocala market. We always have property managers, people buying homes, flipping homes, need stuff fixed before the house closed or, you know, things like that. So the reality is find you a lane, stay in that lane and be successful and invest in your education, invest in the business courses is that going to help you. And remember, you need to pull everything you can out of your instructors. You know, when we put these courses out, the key is, is how many people on here have bought courses? Y'all got 10%, 5% stop, never look back. Mm -hmm. The reality is find your lane, focus on it like Erica say for 90 days, just give it 90 days and grind through it and see the results. But I'm telling you, the trades are wide open. Appliance repair is a great entry point that exposes you to all the trades, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you can win. You just got to put your mind to it and you got to put those support systems in place. Like right now, I'm a big proponent of Profit First. Great mm -hmm. book. That's part of our book club, what we uh, study. And we put these support systems in place because when we came into appliance repair, we didn't have the book clubs. We didn't have the round tables where people could really next level. And so we created those things. That's crazy. That's January's book club for a rise of 20% students when we get over winter vacation. It's Profit okay. First. <laughs> yes, you know they got profit first for subcontractors, so you already in for the. Oh, we got to look it up. We gonna yeah. if you're in the rise of twenty percent class, January we get back on schedule for Tuesdays. Uh, profit first is our book club book of the month for January. So there yeah. you go. Hey, I like it. I like it. What's up, Mongoose Jones? Uh, once you start booming the spec, make a thousand. I mean, it's very possible because of the way our economy is right now. I really think the reason I'm bringing you on is I want people to understand that. If you're using every available man, woman, and child to help with new construction, because they know they're going to get paid hardcore from these builders, and they're going to be there all day from morning to about 5 o'clock in the afternoon, that's leaving very little time in the afternoon for them to come do appliance repair. When do most people want their appliance repair done? Well, the reality is it depends on the client. Most mm -hmm. people want it in their work day. This is why when I say mm -hmm. I deal with a certain clientele, I go into these multi-million dollar homes, everything's in order. They want strict schedules. Don't, mm -hmm. you know, and they're just as polite. They give you the time, but they have time allotted. So usually they want you in there between eight to two, you know, yep. between eight to two. That's where they want it done. Now, there are some other, some younger professionals living their best lives. You know, they don't want you waking them up. So they might want you to come between one and five or, you know, like we offer Sunday service. And I'm going to just tell people the truth. The reality is when I got into the game and I first started, I probably in the first three months, I cleared 150, 180. I believe it. I just started. So my personal goals for my business is between five to 10,000 a day. I'm trying to make sure that we do at least 100 Gs a month. That's how, many, my, how many employees do you have right now? Well, I have 12 subcontractors, but mm -hmm. they're not full time. You follow okay. me? A lot of them have jobs. And so they'll come and do night work for me or something like that or weekend work because I structured my business that way because I saw you know, the market. And I, yeah. because I, you know, managed techs before, it's a different dynamic. So I wanted to give, you know, these guys, they got their health insurance, they got all this stuff over there, mm -hmm. but they're really not paid, but they're comfortable. So they mm -hmm. stay in these jobs, but they don't even understand how valuable their skill set is. So when I come and bring, they out and they do a compressor job for me for 150 to 250, they think they struck gold. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And they could do it all day, every day, if they really wanted to. Exactly. You have to realize, majority of people, when people say, Erica, why did you make the middleman the millions course? Why am I telling you about Rochelle's course? The average guy or girl, even if they got a skill, they don't want to be responsible for, they don't want to be responsible for leads and payments and payroll and all. They hate it. They hate it. Mm -hmm. But if you could call them and anytime they know they need some work, man, let me go ahead and call Rochelle. And you got it, man, yep. you'll, have the, you'll have that person's number forever. And people think I'm joking about this. We still have people calling Andrew, our other owner of the painting company. He switched over to fence. He only do fence now. He don't do any painting inside. People still call him. 
old clients call his the original number uh old contractors we had call that number trust me if you give people work it's and i hate to even compare to this but like if you the big dog on the field and you handing out money you handing out work yeah. you will always have people come back to you right yeah. even if you have somebody like well i'm gonna go work for myself and then they have a, a slow month what they gonna do they're gonna call miss ward hey miss ward yeah. you know yeah. hey you got anything this weekend these guys know they have a skill, but the problem is the majority of these guys don't want to be responsible for leads, payment, they taxes. I had a, a trucker. I'm not even joking, y'all. We had a trucker call us three times in the past week. He called us twice last month. We're like, what, what's up? What you need? I can't find my 1099. You, <laughs> you can't find your 1099. Not us. Your 1099. Yeah, I can't find it. Did you look all over your house? I did. I just can't find it. And I want to make sure I got my taxes right. So we go and we call the accountants and say, can you send him a copy? Yeah, here it is. And we almost had to be like, sir, you a grown man. You're a <laughs> grown man. And you can't find your tax paperwork that we gave you already and mailed it to your house. This this is the nature of people. I want y'all to understand, like, even if you think, well, Erica, I don't want to be, I don't want to be a boss of a bunch of people. Even if I tell you you're going to have contractors and you 1099 in them or they only part time working for you, you, go ahead and prepare yourself mentally to be a manager because that's what you're going to have to do. It just is what it is. Uh, I'm going to read off some of these super chats. Thank you, Art Banaka. Thank you, Erica, for continuing to drop this information. You got me in the Robin Hood a few years back. Thank you so much. Uh, Extraordinary say I, they have smart light switches now, and my electrician charges 125 for each switch installation. He initially installed four for me for 200, but now they real popular. Everybody wants a smart home. They do. Um, Joe said punch list, punch list maintenance repairs too. Where can they find a good punch list, Rochelle? What's a good punch list? Yeah, well, at the end of the day, I tell, I'm going to tell them just like I tell everybody else. All right. Google it. And the reason I say Google it, <laughs> hey, I'm, no. No, 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 I'm not being no, I'm funny. About it. The reason I'm saying that is, is because something like that, I would Google and I would go PDF. And the reason mm -hmm. I am is because people are so loose with information these yep. days. There are major universities and maintenance companies that have set punch lists that they use, but there you actually have access to them because they don't watch their records. Nothing is, wow. is, is the cybersecurity is not where people think it is. That's why a mm -hmm. lot of us have access to stuff that reality, some of us shouldn't have. But when you understand how to use Google and how to research, you can find anything you need. Well, and you can work hard enough. This is what I tell, listen, listen, when I say it, they say I'm being a beast, so I'm going to let you say it. But when I, when I sit here and tell people, they're like, oh, you know, how can you get 9% returns? I'm like, I've done 100 videos on high returns on your income. <laughs> I put together books. I've done all this other stuff. And what I realize is every day somebody just wakes up like they just woke up today and they need the information today. And that's why when you tell people to Google, they get mad because they don't, they don't have good research skills. So Tam yeah. said Osceola, you see these states, these cities right here. Oh, yeah. Pete, Dallas, Brandon, Dallas. Apollo Dallas. Beach, Sarasota, Palm Beach. And I got four people over on that, that side. And I got a couple of uh, coaching clients over there. In fact, one of the guys at my round table just hired two guys in that area because he has so much warrant, just warranty work from GE and American Home Shield. I mean, it's crazy. He got people everywhere because he can't be anywhere. I mean, everywhere. But the beautiful part about it, this is why appliance repair is so good. You can take somebody and train them for uh, a couple of weeks or what have you and let them do dryers only and kill it. I mean, kill it. How many people got that Samsung that's not heating? How many people I hit the button <laughs> and it won't start and it turned out to be a fuse and then you need to clean the dry vents? We gonna put a five, oh, a two, a ten cent fuse in there and charge you two fifty with a straight face. <laughs> See, this is the, this is what people this is what people don't understand. A lot of times, um, I keep telling people what you're gonna see in the future in the next two to five years is companies gonna be like, look, you eighteen to thirty, you want to be trained, come on through, right? They probably can't say ages and stuff because you know age, you know rules, but they're gonna be like, you looking to start entry level, come on in because that's the number one complaint of people. I just want an entry level job. Okay, well you are gonna willing to be trained? Okay, let's come get you some training, and and that's what you're gonna have. Tam Tam has a great offer for you here. I don't know exactly what, but y'all should email each other. Uh, okay. Is she looking for investors to support others getting started? Say someone put 10K to get a few people started. So, Tam, I would probably reach out to info at, was it, Laser Appliance? 
laserappliance.com. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Info at laserappliance.com. Exactly. And that's what I would do. Appliance professional said, I'm retired military. I knock on the first door at 6 50 a.m. 1K by noon. I, I'm telling y'all, it, it, it's out here. Is lawn care still profitable? Every day and twice on Sunday. I keep telling yep. you, there's people that don't show up to jobs, aren't consistent. Mm -hmm. it, trust me. Yeah, lawn care is definitely still profitable. And I can speak to that because I go into these. Uh, oh, look. <laughs> Erica's bragged about my 14 year old nephew. My nephew is now 15 and has 70 yards. He does. Yes, I promise you. Lawn care is still profitable. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, uh, here in South Florida, you know, if, when you cut the grass, time you leave is growing, you know. Mm -hmm. And one thing I've noticed the transition, and shout out to the landscapers, um, the, I'm starting to see a lot of women in it, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And I see a lot of women doing the blowing and, you know, the edging and things of that nature. The reality is it's so much paper and dog. Let me tell you, one of my favorite long hair people in South Florida, they have pictures of the kids on the truck. You know, <laughs> and I just, yep. and just, you know, making it, making sure that everybody realizes it's a family owned mm -hmm. business, it's a generational wealth. You have to. And then on top of that, these are people who came to this country from somewhere else and they live in the American dream. Mm -hmm. Doing stuff that some people may not want to do, and, and all the way to the bank. So, listen, at what I tell you, when I used to go stand in line at Frost Bank, I would <laughs> I, one Sunday, I, one Saturday, it was a Saturday, you know, and Saturday, everybody out there goofing off. And here's this man in front of me covered in paint. Here's this man on the other side covered in paint. Here's this man with his young son, and they, they, they dusty. I don't know if it's like yard work or what, but them checks they had in their hand. I saw a 10K check. I saw a 5K check. So I was like, he didn't just paint. He was doing other stuff at that house for that check to be that big. But they was at that bank, make sure that check got straight to that account. Y'all laugh, but people is cashing all the way to the bank. You know, exactly. they make, they they laughing all the way to the bank. Um, somebody said, did she say 100K a month that month? Yes, she did. Yeah, it's easy. It's easy, man. She's in South it's Florida. Easy. South Florida is jumping. <laughs> Uh, Rochelle, I'm a master electrician here in Detroit. I'm looking for a way to start working with the Tesla charging stations, is what Alfred okay. Washington said. Well, I'm gonna give you a free one for that, bro. All you gotta do is they they're looking for subcontractors everywhere. Just go directly to the site and apply, because <laughs> Tesla is looking for some. Uh, Y'all sleeping. Let me tell you something. I know people not only doing the electrical installs, they even mm -hmm. on the solar panels. I'm like, really? <laughs> uh, I, I keep telling y'all, don't sleep on Tesla. They about to take the solar panel game. It's about to be crazy. Y'all think it's a joke. Y'all think it's a joke. I'm, I'm telling. They about to be insane with the solar panels. Like they're built that whole Tesla factory. Everybody's like, oh, it's cars. Nah, baby, they building everything. Uh, Joaquin said you need the link. I got the link in the chat, and I also put it in the description. Here it is. I'm put it right here. You can book right here with her. Yeah. I mean, I got a great yeah. review on my ride along. We offer ride alongs because it's a lot of people that really, for them to get the experience, they come and ride with me for a day. Then they'll ride with one of the members of my round table the next day. And then they'll ride with a third person because we go to business differently. I'm mainly COD. The next person's going to be all warranty. And the next person's going to be 50 50. And then we mm -hmm. deal with different clientele. Like me, I'm going to keep it a buck. From day one, I said, hey, I'm not going. I'm checking zip codes. I ain't doing no rats, roaches, nothing. I can't. I'm not going to be able to do it. Y'all don't understand. We pulling out people's stoves. You'd be surprised what's down there. Oh, I can't. So, I can't. Hey, I, hey, I'm not doing the luck of the draw. She said, Miss Ward, do you have a set percentage you take per job, or is it different job to job? Well, it, it depends because when you say take, I'm assuming you're talking about the cut with the subcontractor. If you're referring to that, I have set rates with my contractors. Mm -hmm. I negotiate. I mess them up because when I meet them, I say, what do you want? They don't know what to act. You know, they don't know what to say because, and I say, look, I said, this is what you're going to be doing. Tell me what you're comfortable with. And I just pay them. And the reason mm -hmm. I pay them is because if there's a problem, I'm not having that conversation. Resolve mm -hmm. it. Because I go to business so differently than what most people expect. Because I am, I'm about quality, not quantity. And my mm -hmm. customers are so high end, I have to be particular who I send in there. So that person 
like the guys who go do my high-end work they already work for high-end companies so they're accustomed to that and they see the companies charging the customer 15 g's for this job and they might be paying them 35 an hour whereas i i they might say well miss what i need 600 for this job well i paid them 600 but i made 3500 and the part cost me 200 so who winning hey 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 (laughs) you already know so uh people definitely need to be told that if you're going to be making extremely high income you're going to have to manage people each sense this would be common sense but again in america common sense is not common you have to be very clear with people like um ultimately heavy is the head that wears the crown right like if you're taking the responsibility sending them over there you have to be responsible james salmon said i paid 225 for a dryer (laughs) bill i was watching that dude like a hawk so i can do it myself but here's the thing salmon you might turn around and try to do it yourself and still mess it up that's why we tell people these people have been doing it so long and so frequently they in there like this hey i'm out your house Boom, boom, did, boom. did you watch me? I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> What's yeah. up? 291 people in here in the chat, man. Hit the like button. There's been so many people super chatting. I appreciate y'all supporting the channel. Um, I am at the beach, but I am taking this out because I believe in the product. Uh, Miss Rochelle gave great opportunity. She gave great st- snippets to the Middleman of Millions course, and she didn't have to. And she, I thank her for that. She did a great job. Other Z, thank you for ten dollars shout out. Uh, he said, "Shout out to Eric and Rochelle, especially that hundred k a month mentality, y'all." If you understood that there is, and, and, and one day I'll get everybody to understand it. Money is everywhere. It's flying in the air. It's flying all over the place. And, and if you stick your hand up to grab some, it's there, right? If you provide value to people, if you provide a service to people, um, it's there, right? People, there. That's just a need. People need that dryer belt. Look, James needed his dryer belt done that day. <laughs> there are probably 20 other people that need their clothes done and need their dryer belt done too. And then on top of that, there's people with commercial laundry mats. They need their dryer belts done. So James could be doing dryer belts all month long. You know, it, it just is what it is. It's definitely money and replies repair. Oh my good days. An easy 2500 to 3K. Average day is 1200 with four to five jobs. That's why when people sit here and talk about, oh, blue collar men, I'm like, I don't know what blue collar men y'all know. But all the ones I know, they got a nice car. They got their weekend car and they got their daily truck. They always out in that weekend car. Okay. Uh, Congrats. I love it. Nice, nice, nice work. Exactly. What's up, Greg? Look, look, he said, Alfred, do you take mentors? I'm in Detroit too. (laughs) (laughs) Alfred, there you go. Y'all better team up and work together. There you go. I put her calendar link inside the chat. You guys, if you want to book and talk with her, I'm also going to put that in the top link and pin it. It'll also be in the description. Tesla is not a car company. It's a tech company. Jeff Lewis, I keep telling people that, but they really don't be listening. They better figure it out. For real. Somebody said, hey, auntie. <laughs> hey, what's up, Bianca? Hey, Bianca, shout out. That's one of my uh, students. I'll be releasing her interview this awesome. week. Awesome. I like it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm literally about to start doing handyman services this month. <laughs> Congratulations. I mean, y'all think I'm joking. It, when you really step out here and those guys and those work trucks, I remember one time me and my friend, we were eating dinner. No, we were eating lunch and we were in between like the painting cup. We were talking about some clients and we saw this guy that was our competition in that area and he had his truck wrap and he was sitting over there and we were talking to him with like, hey, man, blah, blah, blah. He was like, oh, yeah, I said, I said, your phone ring off the hook. He said, yeah, we got three girls at the office just answering the phone. <laughs> He was rubbing it in our face good. I was like, you know what? Whatever, dude. Yeah, whatever. You do what you do. You do what you do. ABC fam and solid steppers in the building. Yeah, solid solid steppers. I like that. Classy climbers and solid steppers in here. Exactly. All right. Farida James, $10 cat super chat. Thank you. I do IT support at Amazon FC. I install time clocks, networking hardware. Can my skills fit into appliance repair? I could install a ring door clamor or smart equipment. I think it can. Oh, the most definitely, most definitely. If that's what you do, let me tell you something, baby girl. You need to look at appliance repair, but you definitely need to look at the restaurant side. Mm-hmm. Okay, don't sleep on it. Do not sleep. You can go. And- All these restaurants <laughs> trying to update. I'm trying to tell you. If you're in, um, if you ever been to, was it Las Vegas? I'm trying to think which one I was at. I think it was Las Vegas, but in Las Vegas, they had all these Burger Kings and the, yeah, it was Las Vegas. The Burger Kings and the food places had the little, um, what do you, what do you tap it? You tap the little kiosk. kiosk. Yes. 
you don't even get to order at the counter no more. You tap the kiosk and get out their face. And uh, I promise you, them kiosks need support every day and twice on Sunday. Exactly. Big Pain said, you can do YouTube stuff. Listen, Big Pain, you know people can't follow instructions. I know you think so, but they, <laughs> listen, they can't do it. <laughs> Plumber rates, 100, 150 if you watch. 200 if you help, 3,000 if it started before I got there. <laughs> there you yeah, go. tear something up. Yeah, at least don't you have to come fix it. Miss Ward is the truth. I started in this business in San Diego because of her, Nico and Evan. <laughs> hey, what's up? That's my tag team couple there. I mean, hey, I appreciate hello. everybody showing the love, but you know, one thing I tell all my coaching clients. You already got it. All I'm going to do is just help you navigate and then you on your own, you know, and they, they I'm really impressed. Um, we're let, we're definitely looking to take it, taking it to the next level. Um, like I say, the beta, the beta course starts January 1st. So of course that'll be at a discount rate for Mrs. Williams clientele and customers, because without her, it definitely wouldn't be a me. You know, oh, I was man, just I like y'all. I'm telling you, I was just like y'all, y'all don't understand. I've been on the game. I mean, I, I'm one of those people. You know them people you meet, they can tell you how to do everything. They ain't doing it. I had to <laughs> stop doing it. I'm keep, hey, look, I'm telling you, I had to get out here and do it. So I, it's an honor and a privilege to be here. Um, like I said, I slid in here. <laughs> and Jeez, I really appreciate it. At the right the time. You hit it at the right time, too. Um, the economy did the switch right in time. If you heard 100K, hit the like button. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yep. He said, I do HVAC, electrical, pressure washing, windows and doors and floors, plumbing, fixtures, pretty much anything in the house. Man, you're going to stay busy. You're going to stay heck of busy. Yeah. He can pick one lane and kill it. Like here, can yeah. you imagine what HVAC looks like in South Florida? I mean, just Ooh. think about it. Those Texas? guys work like three months and make like a million. I'd be like, really? But they ruthless, man. It's so, it's crazy. And then it's always an opportunity man always well, I, an opportunity. i'll give you an example it's so much money in texas uh there's a company called kangaroo roofing look them up they made so much money in kangaroo roofing that they bought somebody that was getting ready to retire ac company and now they got kangaroo ac i mean they got billboards all over the city they got tv shows they got ads i mean that couple is killing it yeah texas is not even a joke so north carolina has a community college i don't know which one it is? I know it's near Greensboro. They train you for H back in six months. Most of the nation is a year, almost a year and a half. They train you in six months because they got you in there day and night. They hire so many people from out of North Carolina. Hire those dudes that North Carolina is still short on H back repair. They green lighted that school so we could fill our gaps and other people take them. It's yeah. bananas. Yeah, um, but you look at the major companies, man. They do they do H back. They do electrical and they do plumbing. You'll see those three together. You know, look, it's open. They're killing it. And then they slide appliances in the back door and just shut it down. For sure. It, it, it's one of those things people don't understand. I know so many women and men who um, they worked from home or the pandemic. And it wasn't till they worked from home. They're like, oh, that don't work. Why that light fixture don't work? Why this ain't working? Why this window got a gap in it? Why this thing on the floor leaking? Why this creaking over here? What's this making noise? And so everybody I knew that could do handyman services, they was busy. Because people were working from home and yeah. hearing noises they ain't never heard before because they've been gone all day. Right? Stuff been stuff getting on their nerves. They, they don't know how to fix it. So trust me, y'all. Yeah. It is That's it how is. I came in, though, Eric. I was blessed because when COVID... I don't know if I can say that, but it's you don't say it three times. You hit me with the you got it. <laughs> uh, you know, I went in and started working with Home Depot. You mm -hmm. know, because you know how they have their pros. The pros are better. Mm -hmm. Everybody was running because they didn't know what's going to happen. And of course, I was an essential worker, so I was going in places that other. And it was just, I mean, people wouldn't even show up because no one knew. So mm -hmm. I took an opportunity to research, do what I need to do, focus on my clientele, and build the brand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, does Home Depot still give courses? I haven't seen it, John. I think they it canceled it. I think I saw Lowe's recently do the kids thing where they put the kids tools back together. Um, they may be. He said yeah. Arlington, Texas still gives it. Yeah, Texas do what we want. We do what we want out here. Yeah, uh, if anybody good. knows any good handyman at ATL, holler at me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they got a good luck. You're going to be like everybody else trying to find them. I'm late to the session, but did Rochelle Ward talk about how to get our young men in as apprentices? 
Um, we've been kind of tabbing back and forth on it. I said that's just the future of the any business. The next two to five years is getting young men into it, um, getting uh, offering training, essentially on the job training. Because most people aren't applying to stuff because they're like, well, I don't know how to do that. Well, that's what's going to have to be said out here, you know, on the job training. Tam said, I can wash the vans and have van rentals. You can. You can. Uh, we're going we're gonna to wrap. I'm not going to take you all night because I'm going to go eat because I'm starving. But here, I played bowling. I had to whoop these kids in bowling. You know, I had to show them what time it is. I had to show them who's boss. So um, what books do you read? And uh, we're going to kind of close it out with this one. All right. Well, I could go down the list, to mm -hmm. be honest. Let's just keep it real. 48 Laws of Power. Definitely. Yes. Um, I read all Brian Tracy stuff, period. Um, I'm on top of, of course, Profit First, Book Yourself Solid, The Goal, Getting Things Done by James Allen. Um, man, everything from Stephen Covey. I mean, oh, Jim Collins, Good to Great. Mm -hmm. I read anything that's business related so that I can structure my business accordingly, which is why I'm successful. Because I came into an industry that's not structured. Mm -hmm. So me just showing structure and being personable. And then I'm female. I walk in. You know how many people are shocked that I'm a woman? And then I take the time to teach the customer and show them what I'm doing. And they go sit down somewhere and I finish and, you know, they sending me all the neighbors. So at the end of the day, and I let me tell you, I'm going back and listening to uh, Setting Goals by Brian Tracy. I'm doing a refresher, got it on Audible. I've been listening to that all week. I love it. I love it. Listen, y'all, uh, you know, my biggest thing is people are like, oh, what books are you reading? It's not just the books. It's also taking action. Because Rochelle was my student many years ago, and I was like, girl, you got all the tools. Just go. And she waited and waited. It's the taking the action part. And once you step out there, even part time, you start to see, oh, this is possible. Um, if you're in any of my classes, that's the number one thing. I know it drives me crazy when I keep telling you all that. But if y'all just start once a week doing the podcast, once a week doing the YouTube, once a week putting yourself out there, you'll start to see how fast the traction goes because so many people don't take action. So. Thank you for being on. We're going to see you probably next week or the week after, I think. I don't. I think next week, Christmas? I think it's the next week. I think it's the week after. I don't know. I'm going to check the schedule. But we're going to have Rochelle on again because we have so many topics inside of appliance prayer that we didn't even get to, y'all. There's so many different uh, appliances we were going to talk about and also rooms and also different things. You just saw that website where I showed you that list. I mean, we're going to go over Punch Alley. We're going to go over a lot of stuff. So thank you for being here. Tell them where they can find you on this internet. All right, you guys can definitely follow find me at Solid Steps to Wealth, um, uh, right there on YouTube, Solid Steps to Wealth, and you can also, of course, in the at Solid Steps to Wealth, you're going to see the links and everything in reference to my coaching and consulting. You'll also see reviews from my clients, and you'll see uh, other videos and other interviews I've done. Oh, I almost forgot. I can't get off here without shouting out my people, man. Shout out to my boys over at Appliance Alliance. That's mm -hmm. a podcast that I co-host with uh, four other gentlemen, you know, my brothers from another mother, and showing that in our, uh, in our trade industry that we all can get along you know, and support each other. So that's basically it. I love it. I love it. We have uh, Terry, the electrician, said I've been in traffic the whole show. Dang. Sorry, Terry. You got to watch the replay. Hey, shout out, Terry. That's one of my business partners. Uh, Greg, Greg B said, good interview. Shout out to Miss Ward and her team. We'd like to give a big shout out to Tam for the $50 super chat. She hey, is Tam, I'm coming of I'm the coming show. Hey, she's on the other side of Florida. I got to go visit her for them $50. <laughs> for girl, sure. Girl. For sure. <laughs> All right, you guys. I'm glad you guys enjoyed the show. Listen, January 1st is when the course drops. We're going to be basically bringing her on so she can break down so many things. So I'm muting myself. My bad. But anyway, <laughs> this is your girl, Erica, Classic Home Blog. Check out Solid Steps to Wealth, Rochelle Ward on YouTube, on Instagram, and you know what? Just about everywhere. And definitely, if you want to book a call with her, I'll put it in the chat. But I'll also put it in the pin uh, top comment when this video renders. Thank you, Rochelle, for your having to be on tonight. Thank you for the blessing. And thanks for everybody that's supporting us. We appreciate you. And remember, we're too blessed to be stressed. Let's go. Hey, Get let's it. go. Listen, Tam says she's booking an appointment right now. <laughs> All right, you guys. Have a good night.